Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 155 of my poker vlog. My 1-3 meetup game is coming up July 15th at Orange City Racing and Card Club. I'd love to see you there, but if you'd like to play with me and can't make the meetup game, I play pretty much every day on Club GG, even stream it some of the times. Message me if you're interested in that. I guess Ace Jack would snap call too? Do you have Ace Queen? Ace Queen would be nice, I guess. Ace Seven, please run it multiple times. Not even a heart, let's go. Run it multiple times. Yes. No, 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 I get it all. Yes, thank you for tuning in for the stream. We are profitable. This will be clipped for the vlog for anyone who is not here live to see it. So I arrive at 11 a.m. on a Thursday the lists are quite barren. Haven't really seen this empty of a list any of the times I've arrived at Sarasota. So not sure I'm even going to get a 2-5 today, but that means we're going to hop into the 1-2. On the first hand of note, an early position player raises to $7. There's one caller. I'm in the big blind with pocket queens. Definitely going to raise this one up. Happy to get stacks in at a 1-2 table with queens. I raise to $25. The initial aggressor decides to let it go, but a player who just called the 7 decides to call for 25 as well. Not a very standard line, you don't see it too often, but we end up going heads up to a flop, which is queen, 10, 5, 2 diamonds. Flopping top set, I think that I have a little too much of the board locked up at this point. I'd like my opponent to catch up a little bit, so I check, expecting my opponent to just take the betting lead if he has a diamond draw, or like jack 9, things such as that. But he checks it back, so pretty confident that my opponent is very, very weak and I have the best hand. When the turn is the eight of clubs, I have to start doing some betting myself here. Get value from all the draws my opponent decided not to bet himself. Additionally, my opponent had like 9-10 or jack-10, something like that. They now pick up a gut shot as well as a middle pair, so we're going to bet $20. Don't need to bet too big here. Don't think my opponent has too strong of a hand to even continue. When he makes the call... The river is the nine of diamonds. Pretty horrendous card. Diamonds hit. Hands like ace, jack, and jack ten now complete. So I honestly don't think I can bet this for value anymore. So I checked my opponent and he checks it back. He has ace ten of hearts. So debatable whether he would have called a bet with that hand. But glad I gave him the opportunity to turn it into a bluff. Either way, we take down the first hand of one, two. Next interesting hand. I look down at pocket queens again. The card distribution is going heavily in my favor at this 1-2. Wish it was a bigger stakes game, but we'll take it wherever we can get it. I'm in middle position. I raised to $10. Both blinds cost me. I end up going three ways to a flop of six deuce, deuce, two spades. I'm going to bet this. Get value from all spade draws. Six, seven. Sevens, eights, nines, tens. Plenty of hands that can pay off one or multiple bets. So I go for two-thirds pot, $20. Only the big blind decides to call, so we're heads up to a turn card, which is the Ace of Hearts. No. Horrendous card again. My opponent has a lot of Ace-6, Ace-X of spades in range. So when he checks it to me, this is going to be a card I slow down on. My hand is short on value, but definitely don't want to get check raised and kind of forced to fold. So I check this one back, and the river is the Four of Clubs. Now my opponent checks it to me a third time. When he checks the river, I think I can rule out a lot of his ace -X hands. So now I think I can bet small here, get value from 7s, 8s, 9s, 10s, 6s, 7, things like that. So I bet $20, very small bet, trying to get crying calls from weaker pairs. We end up do getting a call, and we end up having the best hand with pocket queens. So happy I went for some thin value here, squeak out an extra $20. A hand I did not get on camera that happened shortly after this was... A player limp called with aces. I flop top top and I double that player up. So I end up losing about $120 in that hand. Somewhat disappointing. You don't really see limp called aces on 1, 3, and above. But it is how it's played at 1, 2. So be wary. But now we are at the 1, 3 table. Finally gets called. And we have one hand of note. With three limps, I looked down at ace king of hearts. Definitely going to raise this one up. I go $21 after... Reviewing it later, I think this is actually the perfect GTO size, what they think is optimal. So, accidentally bungle into success on this one. And to this sizing, only one of the limpers calls. Everyone else folds, so we end up going heads up to a flop. 
of ace nine six two spades i think top top is great here i unblock all the spade draws and all the straight draws so i'm gonna go for some value and protection on this one i bet 35 dollars my opponent calls pretty quickly and when the turn is the eight of spades again the theme so far is disastrous turn cards that complete everything under the sun so i don't really think i can bet here i think my hand is pretty standardly a check call at this point my opponent could have floated with all flush draws all 9x that turn two pair gut shot straight draws regular straight draws this board is much better for my opponent when i check he bets 35 dollars honestly this sizing really just makes me think he has a flush the old same size as the street before you see it a lot in lower stakes games when someone actually completes their draws this is kind of the sizing they use so kind of hating my life right now but i'm gonna make the call not gonna just fold ace king to one bet and what i call the river is the seven of spades so there's a four liner of a straight flush out there now i think it would be kind of sick to just lead and turn your hand into a bluff if your opponent had a f turned flush this end card would be horrible for them you grew up the ace the 10 the five really just put his made flushes in a horrible spot but in the moment i'm just giving up i'm not really gonna be super creative on this one i check he checks it back with ace nine of clubs so we flopped pretty dead off rip but given the run out we had some creative avenues where we could have pulled a win just not this time and now we are finally at the 2-5 game it opened up about an hour and a half after i arrived which i was pretty thankful for considering how the list was when i arrived usually there's already a few names ready to go zero was somewhat disconcerting but i open ace four of spades from middle position and then the button decides to three bet two sixty five dollars when it folds back to me i think my suited ace is fine to call here some of the time could four bet very infrequently it's a decent candidate but i have nut flush potential i do have an ace blocker so some of his best aces and pocket aces are blocked so we're going to continue with this one when the flop is nine seven three with one spade this is a board that's much better for me i have all the sets nine seven ten eight eight six four five all that stuff so i'm actually expecting my opponent to check here a lot of the time but he continues for 65 dollars now just in the moment i really thought my opponent was extremely weak here this bet to me indicated that my opponent really had no clear idea of what he wanted to do he didn't bet closer to pot he didn't down bet to me it seemed very face up like i have ace king or ace jack and i three bet so i have to bet again not understand that this board is much better for me so i'm gonna continue on this one have some devious intentions going forward plans will develop if i hit a spade or a straightening card anything that i think is also better for my range when the turn is the six of hearts i would have went for a check raise if a spade hit but because i actually turn a gut shot as well as some of my straights some of my two pairs another set come in i think the best route to win this hand is to lead now rep the nuts rep 10 8 rep pocket nines hands that i would not want to check through if i had them so i decide to lead for 175 dollars you're making a mistake a note having an ace here is pretty bad i want my opponent to be able to have like ace king ace jack and be able to fold here but even over pairs are kind of in a horrible spot in this i'm repping two pair plus i just happen to have ace four and apparently my story is believable as my opponent eventually lets his cards go so we get a creative kind of donk lead bluff through on the turn just threading the needle for this one like a surgeon i am i am a surgeon i am a surgeon very happy with the result on this one the next hand of note i looked down at king 10 of clubs with one limp i raised to 20 dollars the button the big blind and the limper decide to call so we end up going four ways to a flop of jack nine seven with two diamonds and a spade so i flopped double gutted and an over card no backdoor flush draw but a decent board for my exact hand well even though i'm a preflop aggressor a limper from preflop decides to lead for 30 dollars these leads are often draws whenever i see these very small leads into an aggressor they're just flush draw straight draw things such as that most of the time sometimes i race to punish them this time i have position 
I have a decent hand. If a queen comes, I get the literal nuts. So I'm going to just call this one and see what develops on later streets. When I call the other two players folds, so we end up going heads up to a turn card, which is the three of hearts. My opponent does not slow down. He bets $60. So thinking it's possible he could have a jack here some of the time, but this really just feels like diamond draws. Like, that's what I think he would play this way. I unblock all the diamond draws. So we're going to just call here and see what develops on the river. When the river is the deuce of hearts, my opponent checks to me. Well, he's giving me the green light to go for the bluff. This hand is the literal following hand from the ace four. So I'm kind of going back and forth whether I want to bluff two hands in a row, whether my $175 sizing is just going to get looked up this time. But if my opponent has ace-x of diamonds, it would be absolutely disastrous to check and give him the chance to win with ace-high. So we go for the same sizing. 175 is the wager. Hopefully all his diamond draws will, will fold. Maybe weak jacks. Even hands like queen-10. I'm technically beating it, but they whiffed as well. Everything from the flop on whiffed, so hopefully this one will get through. My opponent holds his cards for a long time, but then eventually pushes it into the middle. So we get our second bluff through. We are doing good on that front today. You can't keep getting away with it! Following that, with an under the gun straddle, an early position player raises to $40. There's two callers. I'm on the small blind. I have jack 10 of diamonds. I make the call. I think it plays fine multi-way. So we end up going four ways to a flop of 10, 9, 6, rainbow. No diamonds. Flopping top pair, decent kicker, definitely going to continue if any of the opponents throw out a bet, but on the flop, it checks through. Turn is the seven of diamonds. I consider betting here, but there is now a four liner. Any eight is a straight. There's plenty of two pairs any opponent can have, and I don't really want to get blown off my equity, so I actually think it's fine to just check call this one. I'd be betting into three other opponents, which is somewhat dicey when any of them can have two middling cards that are two pairs. But when I check on this street, it checks through a second time. All right, seems to be a good result. An even better result is the eight of clubs on the river. So there's a five line around board, but we do have a straight that's better. No one should really have queen jack here all too often because they would have had to check when checked to multiple times when they have two overs and open-ended. Seems like a pretty clear bet spot if you had that exact hand. So thinking I have the nuts, might be chopping with a jack, but in this spot, you can either go polar, like 2x pot, looking like you're trying to buy the board, or you can go small and hope someone looks you up light. Someone hoping to chop, so they call the small bet. So I decide to bet $50, choose the small route. One player decides to call, everyone else folds. I assume I'm chopping, show the jack, but no, we are scooping this one. So get looked up light here, get some extra money, feel good about this one. Following that, we saw kings get it all in versus queens for approximately a 1.2k pot effective. They agreed to run it twice. Here are the runouts. Anticlimactic chop as the queens make a flush on the second board. Always fun to see over 1k pots all in pre. Following that, I'm in middle position. I raised to $20 with pocket eights. The cutoff and the button call, so we end up going three ways to a flop of eight, six, five, two clubs. I think this board doesn't interact with my raising range in general, so I think I have to check top set here for that reason alone. I think I would only bet here if I had ace of clubs over pairs depending on the specific opponents, but in general I think this board's supposed to be checked a lot of the time, so I'm going to check it with top set. On the flop, it checks through. Turn is the deuce of clubs. Because I checked my opponents, I expect them to bet with any flush draws at least some portion of the time. So I think my opponents shouldn't have made flushes yet all too often, but could have naked aces, naked kings, plenty of hands to get value from now. I decide to bet $40, two-thirds pot. I end up getting called by the cutoff, and the other player decides to fold. So we're heads up to a river, which is the three of hearts. Kind of another dumb run out. Any four is a straight. My opponent could theoretically have clubs, but since I pretty much never have a four in this spot, I think the board is better for my opponent. I check to him, give him a chance to bluff if he had just the naked ace of clubs and wants to turn it into a bluff here. He decides to throw out a bet of $85. I pretty much snap call. I'll even show first. No need to make him show in case he is bluffing. And he kind of shakes his head and throws his cards into the middle. Eights are definitely going to be good. 
Might have caught him, might have induced a bluff. We don't know, but we do know we are scooping in this pot. Next hand of note, and this is definitely the hand of the vlog. With two limps, I look down at King Ten of Spades. I raised to $30. Both limpers call, so we end up going three ways to a flop of Ace, King, Six with two spades. Second pair and nut flush draw is a really good spot. What's not great is an early position opponent leads 450. I guess he would do this with pocket sixes, maybe an ace X, but we have the nut flush draw. We have second pair. We're not folding. I think raising is kind of a pun to think any hand that leads here is only calling a raise if they have a closer to nutted hand. So I'm just going to call here, hope to bink one of my flush outs, just make the nuts. But we end up turning the king of hearts. Now we have three of a kind and our opponent checks to us. This is an amazing spot. With this exact line, he pretty much is just screaming he has an ace-x hand, maybe a strong ace. So my plan is to bet somewhat small here, keep all of his aces invested, and then jam river. So I continue for $75, sets up about a $300 river jam. Step one of the plan works out pretty well. My opponent counts out the 75, puts it in. The river is a brick, four of clubs, doesn't change anything. When my opponent checks me, he has about 300 in his stack, and I only have one option. Unblocking all the aces he could have, I would do this if I had like Queen Jack, maybe Queen Jack of spades, all miss spades. Some of the time, you just have to go for it and put your opponent in a tough spot. And since I bluffed many times today already, not that anyone saw it, I do have bluffs. Definitely have to do it when I have it. All in is the wager. My opponent tanks, he shuffles his cards, he shuffles chips, he shuffles cards. Over 45 seconds goes by before he announces, call. I show my hand, and he has ace jack of diamonds. So we end up getting fully paid on this one. Got a lucky turn card, and a disbelieving opponent leads us to a nice chip stack. Looks great to have this pile of chips here. <laughs> And when stacked up, it looks nice as well. I win another small one before. With a bunch trail, there's one limp. I raised to $35 with Ace Jack offsuit. Would have gone bigger if I saw the limp, but I honestly did not. I thought it was just folded to me. But $35 is the wager. Brings the button straddler and the limper along. So we end up going three ways to a flop of Ace King Six with two clubs. When it checks me, this could be one of the times where I put a top pair good kicker into a check call. I will do this sometimes, sometimes you bet, sometimes you check. I mix it up here, this time is going to be a check. Even though we could get value from club draws, they're not folding anyway, so there really is no missed value when checking versus a flush draw. It checks all the way through, and I guess it's somewhat good that I did, because the turn is the deuce of clubs. Today is the day when every flush draw comes in when I have the pair or the over pair. Remember all the queen's hands. But either way, could get value from single club holdings, kings, disbelieving aces. So I wager $60 when check two. The button is the only caller and big blind decides to fold. So we're going heads up to a river card, which is the deuce of diamonds. Pairs the board, somewhat disappointing because I had a really strong ace with a jack kicker. And now I'm going to be playing the king kicker. So my opponent gets bailed out if she has ace 10 or lower. I decide to check it to my opponent, pretty happily a check call spot if my opponent decides to bet. Maybe they'll incorrectly value bet a worse king or will chop with an ace, but they check it back, so I'm pretty confident to show. But my opponent had 7-4 of clubs, so chose not to bet the flush draw when check to on the flop, and then didn't go for value when you have a made flush on the river. I guess you could make an argument there's a paired board, and I guess I would check set of aces, set of kings, so... It's not the worst check, but you definitely need to go for some value when you have a flush. And a final hand of note. With a button straddle, I raise to $30 with ace-queen off suit. The two same players from the last hand decide to call. They're in different positions, but they are the same two people. And we end up going three ways to a flop yet again. This time, it comes jack-seven-deuce-rainbow. As this is a dry, unconnected board, I expect my myself to win with just a seed bet a lot of the time. I have ace-jack, all the overpairs. 
unless my opponents have a strong jack, I don't really expect them to continue versus aggression here. So I bet $70, closer to pot, as folds would be great. If not, I have two overs, some backdoor straight draws, all kinds of stuff. The late position player folds, but the button decides to call, which is kind of concerning. He only has about $300 in his stack total, so not sure I can get him to fold when he's invested almost 30% of his stack. But the turn is the ace of diamonds, so now I hope he won't fold. As I bet flop, I'm just going to bet turn here. Small setup a river jam for about $250. I bet $100, but my opponent kind of chuckles and folds very quickly. So maybe he was just peeling one with air. Maybe he just soul read me to bet with just overs of an ace and then connect with it. I don't know. All I do know is I'm winning this hand and that will be it for me on this day. So we are into the game for $1,000. Out of the game for 1810, which is a profit of $910 across four hours equates to $227 an hour or 45 big blinds an hour. Yeah, today I'm pretty happy my bluffs all kind of got through the way I'd like them to. If either one gets called, I have a quite different session. Additionally, it's great when the King 10 gets the full max value that it's looking for when you turn trips and your opponent has an ace. So that was excellent as well. If you've watched at this point, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. It helps me out a ton and I will see you on the next one.